Hi, yeah. So, um, so look, I'm a safety guy, so I guess that we should probably start with safety first, right? But, but hang on, if we put safety first before every decision that we take and every action that we make, I think we risk not attaining our goals, our objectives, and perhaps importantly, our dreams. Think about it for a moment. Have you ever not done something you really wanted to do because someone told you that it was too dangerous or too risky? You know, modern society today is safer now than we've ever been in every way. Yet the media would have us believe that that's just not the case. The constant barrage of negative news headlines, I think, has skewed our perspective on life and has created a kind of culture of fear in which we're now living. You know, we've become busier and busier in our lives, haven't we? And fear has become absorbed almost into our daily routine, whether it's large-scale panic or a more kind of low-grade anxiety inside us. We seem to operate on an autopilot with fear as part of what we do and who we are. So what is fear? Well, we know it's emotional, but it's not only psychological. When it kicks in, it gets inside our cells, and it becomes biological. You know how that feels, right? First, it starts with the heart pumping away, and then that feeling in the stomach churning a little bit, a bit of unease, and then maybe it's that cold shiver down your spine. And then suddenly you're paralyzed. You know, we need to find a way to deal more functionally with fear in our lives. But the trouble is fear stops us from doing things. When fear kicks in, we, we struggle with what psychologists call what-if thinking. Our brain focuses on the negative. What if it goes wrong? What if my slides don't turn up on the screen? What if it's difficult? What if I get hurt? What if I fail? Or perhaps the worst one, what if people laugh at me? When these what if suggestions come into our mind, our brain automatically goes to the next step and tries to suggest safety behaviors for us to keep us out of harm's way. Top of the list of safety behaviors is avoidance. So for example, if you have a fear of losing your job, the avoidant safety behavior makes you continue to turn up at work every day and keep your head down to avoid confrontation. Even when you're feeling sick or perhaps demotivated by the work that you do. We've got to find a way out from this what if negative thinking because if we don't, fear prevents us from doing some great things. For example, a fear of flying might prevent us from visiting some amazing places on this planet. A fear of failure might stop us setting up a business for ourselves and working on our own. I think the first step in dealing with fear is working out what it is that we're afraid of. So in the spirit of sharing today, let me tell you about my fear. Imagine if you can, me standing at the side of this swimming pool. It's the pool where I learned to swim as a kid. I'm eight years old, standing at the side of the pool, and I can feel it. My heart's racing. I can feel the blood coursing through my veins. My stomach is really churning as I look at the water. My knees are trembling with the fear. Despite everybody around me, I feel like it's just me. I'm alone. I raise my arms to the position that I've been shown and take a deep breath and then jump. There's a splash and I'm in the water going down to the bottom. I hit the bottom and rebound to the surface, gasping for air. I can't breathe, I can't swim. Somehow I struggle to the side and climb out. This was my experience of swimming for several years.
You know, growing up in Scotland, my family were committed to the great outdoors and holiday time was spent exploring Mother Nature. Despite the encouragement from my parents, I'd always hang back on the beach and wouldn't get into the water. Actually, looking at this photograph, you might think that my fear was more of the sunshine than the water. <laughs> but, uh, but look, in Scotland, we don't see much sunshine, uh, especially in summer. But, but despite the fear of the water, even as a little kid, I had an absolute fascination with sharks. And when you think of sharks, what comes to mind for you? <laughs> okay, you know where we're going, right? Yeah, you're kind of thinking about these crazy man-eaters, right? Leaping out of the water to savage us. But, you know, that's media spin. It's not reality. 40 years after Hollywood released that movie, we're still panicking about sharks. <laughs> but you know, I don't mean to be rude here, but this is crazy. Statistically, there's more chance of us dying from a coconut falling on our heads on the beach <laughs> than there is being eaten by one of these things in the ocean. So I'm growing up dreaming about sharks. Fortunately, as a little kid, I'm not paying too much attention to the media. I'm too busy playing with my action man toy, letting my imagination go wild about all of these adventures that I can have underwater with the sharks. But these were my dreams. I couldn't swim. I was terrified of the water. I had all of these fears that I would drown. My brain kicks in with all of those what-if moments. What if I were to get in the water with the sharks? Maybe I'd sink. What if I drowned? What if I got eaten by a shark? All of those negative thoughts came in. And I decided that actually in order to move forward and evolve my thinking, I needed to change the what if negative questions to what if I could and look at this positively. And my what if I could question to myself was what if I could swim? like a little fish. Could that let me get close to sharks? So I imagined myself as this little fish. It started to get me really excited about sharks and the prospect of realizing my dreams. I realized, though, that thinking about my dreams won't overcome the fear that I had of the water. But I knew that action would. So I started taking little baby steps and tried to reframe my fear of sinking and drowning to being able to learn how to float. And as a kid, I would throw myself into every swimming pool and river and lake that I came across and sit there in the water up to my chin, just learning how to be there in the water and not drown. And then I'd eventually hold my breath and see if I could float on the surface. And these small steps gave me the confidence to work through and eventually learn how to swim properly. Eventually, I got the answer to what if I could swim like a little fish. And I found myself here amongst these little fishes, swimming with these massive sharks around me. This is a picture of the sardine run off the coast of Africa. The sharks and big fish chase the small fish up the coast. And I was right in the middle of that with these sharks buzzing around me. I was beginning to realize my dreams. Knowing that I can swim hasn't eliminated my fear of the water, though. Whenever I step foot on a boat or head out on my kayak or go diving with the sharks, I still find that fear kicking in. You know, it's crazy. Even when I'm flying my paraglider high up above the Alps, above Lake Geneva, I'm not worrying about how high up I am. I'm looking at the water below thinking, I really hope I don't fall in there. <laughs> you know, overcoming my fear has allowed me to get really close to some of these magnificent creatures from my dreams. This is, uh, this is a great friend of mine. This is Nelly. She's, uh, she's a six meter long great white shark, just like the kind that you saw in that movie. Um, she's about two and a half thousand kilograms in weight. Uh, and at six meters long, that's about three times the height of me. 
She's a pretty big girl, and I've seen her in different oceans around the world, off the coast of Africa, and more recently, just a couple of months ago, off the coast of Mexico. And whenever I meet her, it's kind of like that welcome that a little puppy gives its owner when the owner arrives home. She comes rushing up to me to say hello. And she gets real close. I'm not sure if she's trying to give me a kiss or she's just trying to show me how clean her teeth are. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not the only man in Nellie's life. Her boyfriend, Bruce, gets pretty upset when Nellie and I start our little kiss and cuddle routine. Uh, and he makes it pretty clear to me by letting me know that nobody else is going to steal his woman. So getting in the water with an apex predator and swimming in close proximity with them without any protection. I'm not in a cage. I'm not wearing chain, chainmail suit. Uh, I guess that's potentially a dangerous activity, right? <laughs> so you might be thinking, how does a guy who's afraid of the water manage to do stuff like this? Well, I'll let you into a secret. It's pretty simple, really. Before every dive, I take myself off to a quiet corner of the boat and begin a very simple, calming meditation, focusing on my breathing, watching my breath coming in and out, counting each one. When I feel the fear inside me, I imagine it as a little cloud inside my stomach, and I put my hands around it and take it out of my body and put it over here on one side. I notice it, but I don't engage with it. Instead, I just concentrate on my breathing and find myself getting into a state of relaxation. Of course, at this point, the adrenaline about what I'm about to do is running through my body. And I use that to get into a state of sort of hypervigilance. And I systematically check through my equipment to make sure it's all functioning properly. Every now and again, I look over at the fear and I see the cloud perhaps getting a little bit smaller as the fear is disappearing. As I get into the water, if I notice that that fear cloud is still there, I just pump a little bit of air into my buoyancy control device to prove to myself that I'm not going to sink to the bottom like I did so many times in that swimming pool as a kid. But swimming with sharks hasn't made me fearless. I'm still afraid of the water. But when I manage my fear in this way, it gives me the confidence to get in and fulfill my dreams. It's not about being brave. I believe that courage isn't the absence of fear. It's the mastery of it. And my contact, my interaction with the sharks, gives me the courage to master my fear of the water. So what you saw in that video were two male great white sharks. Yep, the same as Nelly, the same from the movies. How did they match up? How did their behaviours match up to your perceptions of sharks when I asked you that question earlier? For me, I see these as elegant, graceful creatures who were very calm around me and allowed me to interact with them very closely. When I let go of the tail, the shark continued on with the same cadence that it had before. Very relaxed. And in fact, if we'd continued playing the video, you would have seen it come back around again and do the same sort of interaction with me. You know, we're all different. And we all see fear in different ways. But I think the important thing is that we all have the power within us to evolve those fears into functions that allow us to get closer to our dreams. For me, for my mind, the most dangerous risk of all then is to be ruled by our fears and to miss out on those great dreams that we have, whatever they may be. So my invitation to you today is next time you feel that fear inside you, don't try and hide it away or ignore it. Grab a hold of it with both hands. Embrace it. 
Look deep into it. And ask yourself, what if I could? Thank you.